Yes, so the next speaker is Sergei Bondarenko uh, from Ariel University. And uh, he will give a talk titled CPTM uh, Symmetry and Cosmological Constant in Formalism of Extended Manifold. Yes, please. So thank you for the invitation. <coughs> the talk is formally is very uh, unusual, not, not orthodoxal. Orthodoxic and uh, I will begin from some things about the shadow universe. The idea was almost 60 years old. Yes, people tried to restore some symmetry. And restoration was made by a simple trick. They simply added some matter called by shadow or mirror universe to our sector and assumed that the interaction between two sectors is very weak. Weak in the sense that it is gravitational one. And the whole matter now will restore the symmetry. This idea can understand what I want to do in relation to the smallness of the cosmological constant. So two things must be understood from this, uh, let's say, construction. First of all, how to increase the degrees of freedom of the theory, and second, how to introduce the interaction between two sectors. So the first point is the doubling of the degrees of freedom. Uh, it can be done by so-called CPTM transform. Let's take two manifolds, A and B, and let's make the mat of B manifolds uh, it's uh, similar to the matter of A manifolds by CPTM transform, but let's say uh, changing the gravitational mass of the particles. Namely, instead of gravitational plus, we will get gravitational minus. Inertial mass, of course, will be the same. And uh, apply all this transform to everything we have. Of course, this is an old idea. In some sense, uh, this idea is very well known. If you consider, for example, Schwarz's solution, it simply transforms one and third regions of the Schwarz's solution in terms of the extended coordinates. So in some sense, it's uh, not something too exotic. So now we have doubled, doubled degrees of freedom. Uh, interaction between them I will talk a little bit later, but how, how it works really. For scalar fields, simplest example, nothing is crucial change in the Lagrangian because Lagrangian is square root of mass and uh, gravitational field is tensor one, not changing under CPTM, but what is changing is the apparatus of creation and annihilation. If you, let's say, redefine all these apparatus in correspondingly to the CPTM, what you'll get, first of all, that average vector of Momentum energy will be zero precisely without normal ordering. There is no normal ordering required because you have two fields. Ordering, by the way, that this is precisely zero. And the second thing that the propagator of the B manifold meta is, well, let's say, minus Dyson propagator, is also a known thing. This is hint how it must work, the interaction between two, because this is precisely what happened in the Schwinger Keldish or Keldish Schwinger approach in the non <laughs> equilibrium condensed metaphysics. So, about uh, fermions, how it works. For fermions, something is more difficult because mass is change the sign, but Virbian has also changed the sign. So, after all, we have the uh, Lagrangian with the sum of difference between of two terms, A and B manifold. Directly is not interacting, no interaction. There's no direct interaction between two terms. It's not B metric model. We have A, B, not interacting things. Uh, Connection is not changing, okay? So this is our action, this is our connection. And the next step we can do is simply calculate the effective action. Why calculate effective action? Because we want to watch what happened with bad contribution to the cosmological constant. Uh, cosmological constant. Bad contribution means a uh, very simple thing. Namely, we calculate... Uh, no, where is it? We calculate one loop contribution to effective action, yes. In terms of effective action, it's stat pole and two legs contributions, and uh, we see what will happen with that. We will calculate. So the contribution, because of bare actions, precisely the same. The one loop contribution, precisely the same as well. But when you regularize the actions, they will get different signs. Propagators are different. Pole of propagators are different. And when making, let's say, rotation to Euclidean space, for one loop diagrams, of course, what you get that one, one part of the action will get plus, another minus, because one part have Feynman propagator, another have Dyson propagator, and that have different signs in overall answer. So this contribution is precisely zero. 
And the same about the second one, contribution to fictive action with two external legs is also precisely zero. So no bad contribution to the cosmological constant. They simply cancel one with another. Two things about that, of course, must be said. If we talk about the Keodes Schwinger approach, it's not all the contribution we have. And of course, contribution are cancelled when we have the same gravitational legs, let's say, attached to the diagrams. Otherwise, it will not be cancelled. So I will talk about this a little bit later. Now, one loops in gravity action together. So we have now spin or one loop action, what remain from this uh, action after the cancellations. And we add in the same manner that we add the gravitational action, two parts for A and B manifolds. Okay. Standard definition, nothing special in this case. And a uh, few words also only about the interaction. We now have two manifolds. We double the degrees of freedom and the question how we arrange the interaction between them. In fact, the answer is known because in schwinger keldish approach, it's precisely the same. If you know, you don't, uh, but if you know for sure that the schwinger keldish approach, we have twice more green functions. We have so-called diagonal and non-diagonal green functions. So in this case, the all interaction between A and B manifolds is through non-diagonal green functions. It's very weak, it's very almost zero, let's say it will be zero for many, many contributions, but there is no direct interaction, only interaction through non-diagonal green functions which arise automatically in this approach and in dyson Schwinger approach. So now we can, as example, make usual quantization, so it's usual field theory, you write very, very long effective action. It's long because we, first of all, twice write the action terms for each field, and after that we add non-diagonal terms. It's long, it's simple, but it's long, simply long. Uh, what is interesting about all this construction, if you calculate now this, this is non-diagonal green function, you see this is four, not two, this is uh, Feynman, this is Dyson, and this is non-diagonal. What is interesting, that inevitably you get immediately that usual graviton propagator is modified. Because you have non-diagonal contribution, you have new terms, and now it behaves differently from the usual one. In some sense, of course, it's mimic of the dark matter. So it's kind of bonus. I don't know what precise it will give, but it's different from the usual one. It's not the same as if you consider simply the, let's say, ordinary quantum field theory. Okay? Now, uh, different scenario, how I introduce the gravitational field. First of all, I remind we have Weierbein fields and gravitational fields. So I have to define how they connect Weierbein with gravitational field. The first possibility is the simplest one, usual schwinger keldish Each Weierbein is each gravitational field, yes. I calculate here the cosmological constant, so it wasn't initially in the action, simply calculate like a linear term with respect to the perturbation, to the H. I get two answers. This answer is simply, as usual, is a trace of the momentum and energy tensor. Zero mu mu, so I have two different answers. Of course, on the level of action, there is not will be full cancellation. Okay, classical hour, value. I remind that one loop values are zero precisely. <coughs> on the classical level, it not will be cancellation. Why? Because we are being fields now are different. Free fields may be the same, but for the second order, free fields will be different. Therefore, therefore, for usual prescription, we are being gravitational field, no cancellation will happen for classical values. No full cancellation will happen also for the one loop, no zero. But this is kind of strange prescription because uh, whole model is very similar to electrodynamics. You have plus minus charges, you have one photon field interact with these two charges, why we have to define two different gravitational fields. So let's do like that, make the same Weierbein, one Weierbein, sum of two, H, H, okay? And now matter field interact equally with each, each gravity field, H, N, A, B. Somehow it's one defined photon. Again, this is long. It's long because simply I have uh, non-diagonal terms. Each term is twice, so it's simple but long. I can now calculate the cosmological constant. Now I see it's an interesting thing. My cosmological constant is the same for both manifolds. And this is difference on T mu, T mu, T mu, T mu. So it's in mind, again, this is classical value. For this case, because I defined Verbein the same, yes, for each manifold, one loop contribution are precisely zero, and classical wow is difference of two contributions. Again, we have here two cases, trivial one, simply equal. It means that we have manifold A and manifold B with the same time axis, the same direction, so first order 
value is simply zero with the echo, but we have two manifolds with different directions of time. We can simply exp expand each t in respect to some local time, t large is uh, time of life of universe, universe, and we get that our cosmological constant proportion to this value, one divided by four t, Planck mass, and change, change of the ng momentum tensor with time. Uh, again, you know, not know, this is <coughs> in some extent very similar to what was happened for Hoyle, uh, Narlikar, model of cosmo cosmology invited it before, before Big Bang model. So you, in this case, get very simple answer that cosmological constant is proportional to the change of the matter density of the universe because of interaction between two manifolds. And divided one divided by T. And last variant is exotic one, simply one gravitational field. Okay, nothing is, uh, let's say, separate. Only basic maybe geometry is different, but uh, weak field is the same. Again, what is interesting here that here for gravi gravity we get some combination of two propagators, uh, Dyson is Feynman, maybe. In this case, it's possible that here we arise kind of Wheeler Feynman propagator. And uh, again, no, you don't know. For this case of propagator, there is no asymptotic states. It's also a very interesting possibility can be in general. So my conclusion is very long, but simply can say that uh, what was assumed is a very simple thing. To my opinion, it's a very physical thing, that there is the existence of negative mass particles. <laughs> this, uh, which particles are separated from our, let's say, universe, from our world, they occupy something different. The interaction between, between two manifolds are very weak. And they, let's say, built with the help of Keo de Schwinger mechanism, non diagonal green function. In this case, what you get for different scenario, first of all, cancellation of bad contribution to the cosmological constant, one loop contribution, okay? And on a classical level, cosmological constant is also can be small, very small. And as a bonus, you get that your propagator is also, let's say, transformed, is not really usual to propagate is very similar to the Mont model. It's kind of mimic, again, dark matter behavior. I don't know is it, is it or it doesn't, but it's mimic that. And uh, again, last thing, maybe very interesting also, <laughs> we have cancellation of, well, I guess, whole, all one loop contribution to the effective action. In this sense, it's very interesting to understand how the renormalizability will work in this case. I done, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we still have a few minutes for questions. So, are there any questions? Then maybe I will ask a question. Could you maybe uh, repeat what is the motivation for these two manifolds A and B? Is there an interpret physical interpretation? Physically means that uh, it's very physical question why we have no particles with negative mass. Mm -hmm. In some sense, if you have charges and there is no physical law which forbid that you have gravity, which let's say behaves precisely like us. It's the same work precisely. If you inside this manifold, you will not understand this is negative mass. But only, like a charge, so really, mm -hmm. you only have to, let's say, understand it that positive and negative masses submit. But because they are in different manifold, you simply don't see them more okay. or a lot. But motivation is very simple in some sense, because if you look on the Schwarzschild solution, this is precisely what you get if you make CPTM to, from one to three. You simply see that this is mm -hmm. really glued to, to patches of the whole solution. In some sense, you can check the take, take, let's say, classical solution of gravity, make CPTM, and you'll see that it simply transformed to itself in terms of functions, but not in terms of global coordinates. You have to see also on global coordinates if you have for some manifold, and you'll see the time will be inversed and everything will be inversed. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, are there maybe some questions? Yes. Just a naive question. So there is this model by um, Latham Boyle, Neil Turok, and collaborators for yeah. the CPT symmetric universe, where they do something that looks a little bit similar, and they basically have a, a CPT copy. Yeah, they have of CPT. Our yeah, they have yes. CPT and say about what's happened, what's happened uh, after the Big Bang. Let's say that's right. Yeah. But they also talk about dark matter and they make a prediction for like right-handed neutrinos and things like this. Have, is there any connection to what you're doing? Uh, first of all, because they have CPT as a connection, mm -hmm. of course. Mm -hmm. uh, second of all, it was about the cosmological constant, it wasn't about the dark matter. Simply, when you calculate the propagator, you suddenly see that it's changed. Mm -hmm. 
the change of propagate is kind of mound effect, yes, and uh, it's uh, the simply it's very funny because you get dark matter not by exotic particles and usual gravity, but usual particle and exotic gravity, something versa. But it's here. Of course, in this sense, it's very restrictable but because you can calculate uh, simultaneously two things, cosmological constant and uh, propagate, and simply see which scenario can be true, can, which can be not. It's kind of uh, many possibilities, in fact, okay, you have. Thank but you. of course, it's similar, it's similar in any sense. Uh, thank you very much. It's time to move on.